It might seem like ages ago, but before we had high definition TV, the static on screens was a real bummer. Now imagine seeing that static every moment of your life, even when you weren't watching TV. Have a look. Picture seeing flickering tiny snow like dots every time you open your eyes. That's the reality for those with a rare condition called visual snow. Experts say the condition is quite under-recognized, leaving people suffering without any answers. Often confused with other eye disorders, researchers say visual snow is actually caused by a neurological condition in the brain. Cells in the brain may be overly responsive to visual stimuli, causing extreme sensitivity to light and impaired night vision. So how is a person diagnosed? What are the symptoms? And could people be receiving ineffective treatments because of a misdiagnosis? Join us now is Sierra, who suffers from a visual snow, along with neurologist Dr. Peter Godsby, who's joining us via Skype. And Sierra, I'm so glad you're here because this is something a lot of people are naive to. They don't even understand that this exists. When did you know something was wrong, and can you describe to us what it was like. I first knew something was wrong when I was in college actually and I was looking at my professor by the whiteboard and I started seeing an overlay in both eyes of what looked like TV static. It was like I had a literal snowstorm in my eyes that I, I couldn't escape. And yet your vision, your actual vision, my vision in terms itself. of your eyes was, was normal. My, my eyes structurally were completely fine which was baffling to me. Can you, can you tell us how you finally came upon the diagnosis? I did find out what visual snow was on the internet, and from there I found, uh, found out about Dr. Goadsby, who is with us right now, and he formally diagnosed me. And, and let's bring Dr. Goadsby into the conversation because a lot of people don't know about this, a lot of doctors do not know about this. So can you explain how this isn't an eye issue and how as a neurologist this is something that you work with? What we've found is that if you take a image of the brain, the vision part of the brain using something called functional imaging, then the vi part of the, a, little, a small part of the vision part of the brain is overly active in people who have visual snow compared to those who don't. So it's clearly a brain problem, which is right in the ballywick of uh, neurologists. So is this a fairly rare condition, or do you think it's just misdiagnosed because it's, it's so hard to come here when the, when the visual chests are all normal? It's difficult to diagnose if you've never heard of it. So one of the problems is there's a substantial group, about a third, who've had it as long as they can remember, so they think it's normal. They, in fact, don't say anything for uh, quite a long period of time. There's so many levels of challenge. I, I wonder how rare it is. It's certainly under-recognized. Tell us about your work gaining, kind of, to bring attention to this. Right. Well, it became evident to me <laughs> after my search that there is currently not a cure for visual snow. So I'm suffering just as much today as I was the day that I first started seeing visual snow. But I've learned to adapt, and the only thing that's changed really is my outlook and my perspective. So I tried to become my own advocate because I realized there wasn't a lot of awareness about this condition. And there were others like me, so I wanted to help people and hopefully raise awareness for visual snow. And that prompted me to start a charity, Visual Snow Initiative. Welcome. Well, and I think today, as you mentioned, more people than ever before will know what visual snow is here. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Dr. Gosby, thank you as well you. for sharing your expertise. We're gonna have more information about visual snow on our website, thedoctorstv.com.